Ugh. What's gonna jump out? It's like a butcher a, shop. A, a half dead stormtrooper. Ah! Whoa, God! Jesus! <laughs> I knew that was coming. Ah! How is that still alive? <laughs> How is it still alive? What oh part God, of it it's... did he come out of? Oh, wait, is that okay. a. Yeah, that's one of those seismic charges. Yeah, it oh, is. Oh, I love that. Bang! Yeah. Oh, <laughs> well, my that'll God. do it. Okay, so now the Sarlacc has to be dead, right? Now it's dead. Or now does it come back dead. in Sarlacc H2O in 20 years with Busta Rhymes? And or in like episode 12, I have been every monster <laughs> <Yeah>. inside <laughs> your boot. <laughs> Next to Palpatine is just the Sar uh, clone Sarlacc. Welcome back to New Rock Stars. The Book of Boba Fett episode four gives that old Sarlacc one final jump scare while making us wonder if we might now be looking at Boba Fett defending Tatooine alongside a gotcha that includes Din Djarin, the Mandalorian, as well as who knows else, uh, Bo-Katan, Koska Reeves, Sabine Wren, the other members of the Watch, maybe even a couple of hustlers named Han Solo and Lando Calrissian. <laughs> they ain't too old for this shit. What, what the, the Fett? <laughs> Yeah. This is Wookie Leaks, New Rock Stars Book of Boba Fett After Show, and our weekly reaction to the latest in Star Wars. I'm Eric Voss. My Easter egg breakdown for episode four is coming tomorrow, but right now I'm here reacting to this episode with Tommy Bechtold. Tommy Ooh, thoughts. Eric, I can't wait to party with you. That's a Thundercat <laughs> reference, cause he's in this episode. <laughs> Thundercats, now Star Wars canon. Yes, I love it. it we filled in a lot of gaps now. Uh, it seems like we're done with the flashback. Yeah. Uh, we now learn mid-season, this is why we've had so many of these baths. It's my favorite establishing shot, I think, yeah. in Star Wars. Just exposition. Boba lies in his back to tank. <laughs> yeah. Again. Just Undefended. So, again. Just kind of making a face, like a little bit depending yeah. on what the dream's going to be. He's got his little snorkel in. But I yeah. can't, I'm trying to remember, like it, it feels like his nose is very exposed in that thing. Yeah, water's creeping in your nose. Like you gotta like um, consciously breathe out through your nose. Otherwise, yeah, yeah. You're, you're getting still... a waterfall. You're getting a, a sinus wets. That's right. You, you know? don't want sinus wets. We all know those are the most incurable disease in Star Wars canon. <laughs> <laughs> you get the Star Wars wets, you're done. I mean, this is kind of like um, you know, in in Sopranos, we'd always cut to uh, to Tony chatting with Doctor Melfi, and yeah. it made sense just kind of like seeing him like lounging in that chair. Like we're just getting to know more of this yes. guy's issues shoes but it's just so funny to see him taking a bath to do yes. this like kelly and I, I, I we we found out that like some of our friends just love to take baths oh, and it's yeah. just so i don't take baths i shower but it's weird the idea of taking baths constantly i, it's I agree it's very concept. ancient greek uh very ancient <laughs> greece uh you know let us know in the comment section if you're part of bath culture because i also <laughs> do not What's identify as a bather my muscular frame does not allow for <laughs> tub comfort i'm usually like i create a <laughs> suction with the tub uh very like uh, uh taft like tub situation i've been pulled out of a few tubs by, by by tub professionals so you know i think other than tub girl i may be the most disturbing person oh, to be in tommy it's not fair we're we're hardly five minutes in this episode you're already <laughs> referencing tub girl <laughs> it's too early in the episode we got to save that like the dirty snl sketches we got to save those yeah, to, you're, 10 you're, to 1 right, the final five right. minutes oh, that's okay, when we throw fine, in tub girl fine, fine, oh god sorry well, that out of the way, let's talk about what happened in this episode. Yes. So we open with what seems like our final tub in adventure. Yes. Uh, and <laughs> we find me. out that... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Not for Tommy. <laughs> but uh, uh, Boba Fett is riding his trusty Bantha, and he heads over to Jabba the Hutt's palace to try to get his ship back. But unfortunately, the place is heavily guarded by, what's, by what seems like unendless swarms of Gamorreans mm -hmm. and uh, Nikdos and Trandoshans. Oh, everyone's going in and out of this place. So uh, instead of attacking alone, he sees a light in the sky. We hear a familiar flute sound effect, and we realize we are connecting with a, a familiar moment from the Mandalorian chapter mm. five. That's when uh, Fennec Shan was left dying from that gut wound. Mm. Uh, and we actually see the same footage of those boots walking up. This is after she was left to die there by that little jerk, Toro Calican. 
Yeah. But uh, now we realize that's probably what happened. It was Boba Fett, and this just confirms it. And he takes her to this, uh, well, not a hospital, not a back to tank. No. The wound is too serious for that, Tommy. That's right. He's got to take her to a Maz Eisley mod shop run by the mod artist played by Thundercat. Thundercat. Yes, suicidal tendencies. Not That's not a <laughs> claim I just made. That's the band he was in. Uh, right, right. No, I, and, and also, I like, of course they can't go to a hospital. Like any good mafia show or movie, like yes. if someone gets shot, you got to take them to like a veterinarian who's like addicted to opiates or something like that. <laughs> yeah, like, so there's no way. Dogs got, barking in the background. Exactly. Yeah. But I did like, yeah, I thought this was a cool kind of giving more depth to these like mod kids that are running around these cities. It's like, oh. That's like, okay, this is where they're getting it all done. And I like the guy. My favorite guy was the goggles guy. Because that's yeah, a commitment. Just goggles. You got both yeah. eyes gone, and now they're just goggles, droid goggles. So. Now, I had to wonder. I assumed those were his eyes now. But I wonder if he was just, like, faking it. Like, he's like, he wanted to fit in with the mod, so he wore these cool glasses. <laughs> he just got, just like he just got some steampunk glasses and was like, <laughs> yeah. my eyes are modified, too. Calculating. They're like, we, Brad, we can see you <laughs> saying calculating. He's like, no, that's my goggle droid. Calculate, Brad, please. I'm from a poor family. It's not fair. <laughs> but what I love about this is it gives us a bit of context to that moment when Stephen F. Root last episode mm -hmm. was saying, like, they augment themselves with cybernetic parts. And then both Boba and Finnick are like, yeah, yeah, she did the same thing. We know that guy, the bassist, yeah. who, like, in between of a uh, weird steampunky surgical stuff, like, he just started picking up his bass guitar. Yeah. And Put Max Rebo to shame? Yeah. Oh, oh yeah, no. Don't you dare talk about Max Rebo like that. <laughs> Max is back, dare. baby. He's still on tour. <laughs> he never went anywhere. What is I wonder <laughs> what his what is his deal with uh with that place? Is he on like a ten thousand year contract where he's just gonna like they they plucked him away from the cantina and now he's at the sanctuary just jamming hey, away. Maybe they gave him a better deal, right? Yeah. Like he gets uh, two bar chips, you That's know, right. one for him and his Biff. And finally Ooh. these guys get And to one him. for his weird long ears and legs. If you see the Max Rebo, like he's playing it with his legs puppet thing, it's very disturbing. <laughs> Look up Max Rebo's real body under the uh, keyboard if you're not... Uh, if you're not doing that, no, then prepare Tommy, to be disturbed. It's too early in the show for these things. <laughs> too early. We gotta get past he the makes, ass spot. He makes he makes Tub Girl look like Audrey Hepburn. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> wow uh, somehow we also offended audrey hepburn in this why do we have to bring her into this right now she's in heaven she's like why? she's gonna be on this season no, I, yeah, exactly. uh, yeah. I imagine her sipping a martini there i don't think she'd be she's thinking. standing next to mickey rourke who also has his augmented goggles on and they're like he's she's like mickey why did you bring those to heaven uh <laughs> Well, we've gotten completely yeah, off the rails <laughs> like a pike train at this point. Um, so we have now, um, we're now catching up with Boba Fett and Phoenix Shan campfiring. Uh, we had a lot of campfire scenes between these two. I could have used with four more, personally. Um, we get to uh, have these moments with the giant bantha. And I, I just like, love seeing Boba's, like affinity for animals like he is like a classic like uh crime boss yeah. that like has no problem killing living like sentient beings and like you know uh you know humans and aliens but when it comes to an animal he's like protect them at all costs <laughs> i mean this is this is all this is classic tony yeah. soprano right yeah, the right. ducks the yes, horse like he yes. kills one of his captains is spoiler warning over the yeah. fact that he killed a horse for insurance purposes That's right that is worse than killing a she person she was a beautiful mind. creature you killed her <laughs> beautiful creature that was a terrible <laughs> tony soprano impression it sounded oh really i thought bad. it was a plus tommy but he was crying uh, you're amazing he was crying when he killed <laughs> Which is how I've always been. Uh, anyway. But uh, he uh, he claims that he is now tired of this bounty hunter life of doing the bidding of stupider leaders. Mm -hmm. And now he wants to head up his own gotra. Try his hand at ruling for once. Uh, and he wants his fire spray gunship back. Now, just to clear something up. The Fire Spray is the type of ship it is. It's not the name of the ship. Yes, it sounds like they have renamed Slave One. Mm. I don't care what anyone's opinions are about that. Mm. But uh, the ship is just a Fire Spray 31 class patrol and attack craft. Yeah. That's just to clear up. We don't know what the new name is. But they invade Jabba's palace. And I love this whole scene where they run into a chef droid. And yes. then the other droid is called a sous chef droid. Yes. I love how they cleared that up in the captions. Yes. And uh, that's, that chef droid pulls a General Grievous with his butcher knife. But he brought a butcher knife to a blaster fight or at least a gappy stick fight. Or in this case, it was... It was Finnick Shan just severing yeah. his head. I mean, yeah. I have never seen a robot get its throat slashed, but I did not know how badly I did need to see it. You know what I've never seen before 
is a uh, lep droid, a rat catcher. Yes. Sobbing <laughs> and depowering himself. Well, don't we all wish every once in a while we could just go for a little bit? Yes, but only if there is a chance to just reboot oneself. Yes. Like, yes. It's, yes. it's kind of like that. I, I do really like that uh, uh, Bo Burnham joke where he, you know, he's talking pretty directly about suicide. And he's like, it just sucks that it's permanent. It'd be great mm. if I could just like skip the next 18 months and mm, just kind of wake up. Yes. But I can't. And that's what this droid is able to do. He's yeah. just able to just extract himself from this horrible, humiliating moment. Mm -hmm. I thought that was the most touching moment for yes. me. Oh, yes. It was heartbreaking. I was worried about the left droid. Honestly, I was like, wait, is that, did he just off himself? <laughs> like, Yeah, for a second it did yeah. seem that way. <laughs> but they managed to get back to Boba Fett's ship and they can get out of there. It just seems like a matter of shooting the right counterweight to open mm -hmm. the door. It felt very mm -hmm. uh, Legends of the Hidden Temple yes. style to get out of there. But I'm loving it. Uh, and then um, Fett says that Shand, you know, can leave his service like the the life debt has been repaid but she's like you know what i'm gonna i'm gonna hang out and despite finnick casting doubt that uh the nikto kinton striders were actually the killers of the tuscans mm -hmm. that doesn't do any investigation no. that that uh sigil was enough proof for him mm -hmm. and he goes crazy mm -hmm. on them yes doesn't give them a chance to explain themselves no. these guys are stricken from this world yes. they're gone this is pretty frightening i have to say yeah and that fennec didn't really seem to object at all no she was like i love this i'll sit shotgun for this <laughs> literally who else can we shoot yeah you want to just go shoot some people in the streets of uh maz Eisley? it's like now, another weird thing is, like, we already know the Jawas stole his armor, mm -hmm. but for some reason, Boba Fett's like, I gotta get as close as freaking possible into this Sarlacc's mouth. Uh, and I want to see its tongue. <laughs> it seems like he was semi-conscious when the Jawas were taking the armor off him, yeah. but, look, it was, it was a traumatic memory being covered in the stomach acid of that Sarlacc, and... On those sands, maybe he just blacked out. And, and he, he was dehydrated, and, and one of the symptoms of dehydration is hallucination. So there is a quite a possibility that he was like, I, I mean, medically, as much as I have no idea what clones symptoms are to, you know, the effects of the twin sons of Tatooine. Are you, it sure. would stand to reason that his memory is a little uh, fuzzy from the, the point where he yeah. escaped on. <laughs> I just want to know how this Sarlacc is still alive. Michael Myers, yeah. Yeah, we didn't see him like actually claw his yeah. way out of the Sarlacc's belly. Yeah. Now it just seems like he was a bit of acid reflux burp up. Like, yes. instead of, I imagine him clawing through his stomach lining, through his intestines, wherever he was, uh, through flesh, through layers of muscle, until he got through the skin and broke through right. using fire and whatever. But no, that wasn't the case. He just kind of burped up. And that even the Sarlacc's limp uh, tentacle was on the sand. And now that Sarlacc was, seemed pretty healed. It seemed pretty Maybe robust. Maybe that Sarlacc was in a, in a back to tank. Yeah. He had an even bigger back to tank where the Sarlacc would have dreams of his traumatic past. Oh, with, that's, with now that's what Rick and, Mo Raider Rick and Morty would do that. Rick and Morty would have it retreat <laughs> into a, a different back to tank and then show it getting raised by a different tribe or being uh, taught the customs of a different tribe. Now, I, <laughs> I, I was going to say, like, you know, it is the horror movie trope that if you don't actually see... The full right. death on screen, it's not dead. Yes. So I feel like with the uh, with the seismic charge, it's definitely dead now. <laughs> but Yeah, and I love bringing back that seismic charge from Attack of the Clones. I just love that sound effect. Like, that could be, if you could just put that on repeat, that'd be white noise for yeah. me. It just gives me that's some a, ASMR. That's my, I yeah, I was going to say, that's my ASMR as well. <laughs> <laughs> so we jump back to the present, where Boba Fett heads to Garza Whip's Club, the sanctuary, to, you know, take in some of those uh, Max Rebo tunes. Mm. He's on his uh, uh, third wave of his career. He's right. doing his best work. Right. Um, <laughs> and we see, like, Black Kersantan just go crazy in this mm -hmm. club. He, We see him, another kind of, like, Tony Soprano type thing where he's just watching people have fun and then suddenly snaps. Uh, where he's, like, watching these gambling Trandoshans. Now, why why does he hate the Trandoshans? Well, I we do, we got to remember, Doc Strassley, the leader of the Trandoshans, these people hunt Wookiees. He brought in a Wookiee pelt as a tribute to Boba Fett. Uh, I think Black Santa knows that, so he doesn't even like take the amazing offer 
of uh, of Garth's whip offering to clear his bar tab, and he just rips the guy's arm off. Mm. But it would not be a proper gathering on uh, Tatooine unless someone's arm got ripped That's off. That's true. Cantina, that right? is very true. Uh, Tommy, you said maybe he just hates gambling. It could be yeah. that. Uh, yeah, maybe he's got. Maybe he ab- he abides to a very King James uh, Christian Bible strict <laughs> interpretation, and and thinks games of chance are forbidden. Right, he his life was ruined. He had a, a wife who got in it with the sharks, and they cut that's up right. her face, and that's how he got these scars. <laughs> yeah. He just wanted to show her that he could still smile. <laughs> <laughs> It's a different one every time. <laughs> well, outside the club, Boba offers BK a job on his team, and BK just does one of these, like... Yeah. <laughs> okay! <laughs> I'm in! You son of a bitch, I'm in. <laughs> That's how I want them to recruit the rest of their gang, It's just going around. I wanted the montage. I yeah. wanted them a Gruber montage that ended with all these people in a ship that just explodes, and the Boba Fett goes, oh, no, 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 no. no. No, BK, no. Chrysanthemum, are you okay? <laughs> Call 911. Tuck, um, no, Tuck. <laughs> so we see this one last scene that we've seen in a trailer footage of the big family dinner table, right? Mm-hmm. With all the different leaders of the families, mm-hmm. uh, including finally those crazy old Clutunians. Uh, and then Boba requests that if they aren't going to help him in his war, to at least stay neutral against the Pike Syndicate. We'll see how long that pledge neutrality lasts. Yes. But all they really need is a little encouragement from the terrifying 10-foot Wookiee that's standing behind them mm-hmm. and the fact that this table is right above the gate for the Rancor pit. Mm-hmm. And that Rancor, I thought it was a uh, a, a deeper pit. That Me Rancor too. seemed like he jumped up, uh, yeah. you know. Uh, maybe, his Dan, maybe, maybe, yeah. maybe his trainer was just, like, lifting him. Like, like yeah, giving, giving, <laughs> giving him a boost. Yeah, Trejo's down there beneath yeah. the rank. We're like, come on, get your claws through the grate. Trejo's buff on all those Trejo tacos he's been consuming. <laughs> yeah. so he, he Man, Trejo's tacos. Mm. Oh, the mm. best, best breakfast burrito in oh, Los yeah. Angeles. Anyway, uh, so as Fett says that he needs more muscle for the war, Fennec says she knows where to find some muscle, and we hear the music from The Mandalorian suggesting mm-hmm. Din Djarin mm-hmm. is going to be on the call sheet next episode. Woo! And we are so excited. Yes. But our merch partners at Epic Hero Shop have a new shirt in their latest Obsession series inspired by the book of Boba Fett. These are limited editions. Uh, that Spider-Man No Way Home shirt are already sold out. So grab one of these Boba Fett shirts before they are gone. And when you grab a latest Obsession shirt, you'll get the added option to write in a custom shout out that will appear at the bottom of these Book of Boba Fett after shows. We got Danny who says, Finnick Shand let Black Kersantan in to kill Boba. Hashtag Mephisto hot take. Um, Yeah, someone uh, someone was sleeping on the job. Yes. I think for sure. Well, and you know, half the guard are teenagers and the other half are thick, thick big men. So... You know, it stands to reason that the teenagers were flirting with each other. The thick boys were flirting with each other. Who knows? Maybe it was just a little bit of a casual Friday when BK stepped in and choked out Boba. Yeah, you know what? You know what? Smooch on your own time. This that's, is company time. Yeah, yeah. you know what? Boss makes a dollar, I make a dime. That's why I smooch on company time. <laughs> Well, Brian says, just a fellow UF alum buying some sweet, sweet merch. Love y'all. Well, we love you, Brian. Go Gators. And uh, Paul says, thank you, Eric and Tommy. My dad and I have been bonding more over the new Star Wars and Marvel shows. Paul, Paul. I love hearing that kind of stuff. That's really nice, Paul. knowing that people are coming together over these shows. Tell your dad we said hello. Hey, tell your dad I said hello. (laughs) <laughs> well, check out all of our awesome merch options at NewRockStarsMerch.com. All right, Tommy, let's dive into it. What's the big question coming out of this episode? Eric, who the Fett will Boba Fett and Fennec Shan recruit to fight the Pikes? Yes, uh, that is the question. Fennec says credits can buy muscle if you know where to look. And right after Fennec says this, we hear that familiar music. Let's roll the clip. Yes, yes, that is Ludwig Göransson's flute theme from The Mandalorian, the music of Din Djarin. Now, I, again, a reminder of this episode, we have now seen all the footage that has appeared in promos. We are in the blind now, people, and in these final three episodes, it's all going to be new, unseen footage. That could mean the remaining three episodes heavily feature this newcomer. Now, when we last saw Din Djarin at the end of The Mandalorian Season 2, 
he uh, was breaking our hearts into a thousand pieces by giving Grogu to Luke Skywalker <laughs> to complete his Jedi training. And he has possession of the Dark Saber, mm. which seemed to set up a bit of tension between him and Bo Katan. That was the weapon she was really in this for. Um, but it doesn't seem like he has taken over as automatic leader to Mandalore yet. Mm. These are civilized, uh, complex people. They're just going to look at a sword and be like, oh, he's he's boss now. Okay. Right. But it will go a long way into his claim if he wants that throne. Right. I don't think he does. It doesn't seem like that's anything. He's, he tries to immediately give Bo-Katan the dark saber and she's like yeah. not that way homie no I His have to only... kill you I have to beat you to do I do it. have Damn to slit it. your throat to get this <sighs> I don't even want to die um but I think that was setting up a, a future for uh, Mandalorian season three. The mm -hmm. title of that show is The Mandalorian. They made it clear the Book of Boba Fett is not just, you know, the next chapter of The Mandalorian. Mm -hmm. But he is going to cross into it. So I think this is going to be uh, kind of a Mandalorian uh, season 2.5, right? So it's going to set up what happens in The Mandalorian season three. So this is going to be some kind of side quest that he's now joining Boba Fett on. Mm -hmm. Um we also got to remember that Bo Katan initially got into a brawl with Boba Fett in that cafe. She considered mm -hmm. him, she considered him a false Mandalorian, a clone who's committing a kind of stolen valor. Doesn't deserve to be wearing that Beskar armor, but in fact, Jango Fett was a clone. He raised mm -hmm. Boba Fett as a son. Jango Fett was a Mandalorian, I should say. Uh, they have a chain code that dates him back to Jaster Mareel from Conquered Dawn, who was a different division of the Mandalorians. Uh, the true Mandalorians, as opposed to the Death Watch or the Watch, what is now the Night Owls of Bo-Katan and uh, Casca Reeves. But we should also remember, it seems like someone else is out there, Sabine Wren. Uh, that's who was joining Ahsoka Tano in their search at the end of Rebels. And she has her connection, of course, with the Mandalorians. Uh, another thing that we should remind ourselves of is that uh, Dave Filoni himself will be directing at least one episode this season. And normally, he'll come in to direct something, as you saw in uh in the mandalorian the ahsoka episode someone who it's an a live ad, it's a live action adaptation of a character from one of the animated series that he deeply cares about getting right mm. so i have to wonder if one of these characters is going to be from that world if it was just a matter of din Djarin, i think they could entrust uh, uh john favreau who writes all these episodes and robert rodriguez who directed a number of the mandalorian episodes to do it um but we have to wonder now who is really controlling mandalore and why Characters like Bo-Katan and uh, Din Djarin might want to help Boba Fett. Maybe if he could say, you scratch my back right now on Tatooine, I'll scratch your back on Mandalore. I'll help you retake that planet. Mm. That's how they can pull those levers of power to get them on their side in this temporary fight with the Pikes. It could be revealed that maybe the Pikes are the ones controlling Mandalore at the present moment. We mm. thought it was Moff Gideon, but all we know is that he's the one who like sacked the planet and raided them of their relics. We don't know who's currently controlling it. It seems like the Pikes are incredibly powerful. Uh, they have kind of filled the vacuum here of power here in the universe as the Empire is still picking up pieces. Um, but it could also be revealed, if it's just the Pikes, I, I just think the Pikes are kind of, I'm sorry if you are a Pike stands, I think the Pikes are kind of boring villains. Yeah, I do too. I, I, I'd like them better as like cogs in a machine who are constantly mm -hmm. like serving different leaders and playing all mm -hmm. sides of the war. I'd be more interested if a group like the Crimson Dawn mm. is really controlling Mandalore at the present moment, just yes. because Kira has, like, not force capabilities, but she has a lightsaber training, mm -hmm. you know? That was a big thing that she learned from Maul. Uh, so I think that'd be an exciting uh, big bad behind who's currently on the throne of Mandalore. Mm. That's who they're going to try to de defeat on the Mandalorian, and that's who also the Pikes are working for. That can hopefully be something that is revealed on the show. If not, that's okay. My theories are often wrong. Um, <laughs> uh, just kind of run through a couple other options who could join this Gatra. Uh, who is motivated by money in this world or could be convinced to join Boba Fett's family? Well, we got Bill Burr as Migs Mayfeld still floating around somewhere out there. That guy, just throw a, a sack full of money at him. Yeah, too. I mean, he is technically dead. He did die in an explosion, according to uh, the lie that's been made. That he's, high, he's presumed dead, right? That is his uh, his story. I mean, no, he isn't right. really dead, but he's pretending. Right, to be right. Dead, but right. that's, yeah, he's yeah. He, he's a, a free actor. He can, can go wherever. Yes, exactly. It's kind of like there's a benefit to people thinking you're dead, as Boba Fett explained. That's right. Um, there's also the possibility that Omega could show up in live action. Mm. Uh, that could be the cameo that Dave Filoni wants to get right. You know, like uh, Omega is technically a clone sister to uh, to Boba Fett. I don't know if they know each other. I don't know if she would care about helping him defend Tatooine's crime organization to just 
work independently from a non-corporate <laughs> arrangement. Mm, yes. Uh, um, but there are, you know, these rumors that people like Han Solo, maybe Lando Calrissian could show up. Are Do you think they'd pull just the same trick of de-aging Harrison Ford the way they did with Mark Hamill? That is uh, the rumor that is going around is that he that that he was on set for uh for some filming. So uh, I don't know if that that's true, but if if that is the case, yeah, I think they would de-age him, right? But the problem is his voice is so much deeper now. Like Hamill's voice got deeper, but he can still kind of he's such a gifted voice actor, he can kind of pitch yeah. it up a little bit. I don't know if Harrison Ford's voice is currently like this. It's going to like, you know, it's going to if he's going to be able to do it. I mean, obviously they could find a voice match too. You know, there's enough talented impersonate impersonators out impressionists right. out there. But yeah, I don't know. I don't know if I need Han Solo in this adventure. You know, I think there's other fun people that could could get involved. I mean, obviously I'll I'll take any Han Solo I can get, but I just sure I don't know. I'm not sure. Yeah, but, I guess my question would be like logically, Han Solo, uh, he for a time stayed with Leia. They were right. raising a son, right? Um, Ben Solo around this right. time. I don't know why he would leave that. Yeah. Was Ben, Ben would have been, oh, I guess maybe Ben might not have been born yet. I think hmm. Ben was born in 10 ABY, which would be okay. right after. So this, this. would be his, but this is still, like his, ba- this is his bachelor party. This is his, ba- <laughs> I mean, he is, they're like, they got to be settling down right, right now in right. the New Republic. So I don't know why they convince him to be like, hey, yeah. help us fight this, uh, Crime boss versus crime boss mm. war. I don't know if Han would be interested in that. But anyway, uh, let's talk about what a gotcha means. Okay, because that sure, word sure. gets dropped this episode. And it's interesting how they frame it that way. Because that's what Fennec says when mm. uh, he's like, oh, you want to head a gotcha. Now, we've heard gotcha in Star Wars before in Mandalorian Chapter 9. Gore Koresh, that was uh, Leguizamo's character, says he swears by the gotcha that he knew of someone on uh, in Mandalorian armor in the city of Mos Pelgo on Tatooine. Uh, there's also been mention of a droid gotcha in the 2014 Tarkin novel in the Doctor Afra and Darth Vader comics. That's a group of droids supporting droid rights. Mm. But gotcha is actually a Sanskrit term in Hindu culture referring to a lineage, kind mm. of like a, a family tree or a dynasty. Mm. Uh, it's more complex than that. I'm just giving you the shorthand of it. Um, but contextually, Phoenix Shand is kind of asking Boba if he wants to start Essentially, a new house of Boba. House you know, of Boba. Family. Father, son, and house of Boba. <laughs> um, Lady and Gaga's got to inter- get involved. That's what- <laughs> it's interesting that she frames it a way because the guy is a clone, uh, genealogically right. speaking. Right. But would his house, his gotcha, be made of, of genealogical ties like oh. other clones that might still be out there, like Omega, or his ancestral roots... Through the Mandalorian lineage, like, and that would connect him potentially with Bo Katan, with Sabine, mm-hmm. with Din Djarin, the Watch, the other Mandalorians that are out there, uh, uh, or perhaps his newfound family uh, mm. of criminals through the remnants of Jabba's cartel. Well, you know Which, what? Yeah. Why not? I mean, this maybe this is all about the family you choose. You know. Maybe right. this Gatra is, you know, heroes, or, or not heroes, but, you know, bounty hunters for hire. I mean, the boss has to be out there somewhere, you know, uh, yeah. doing heists. Maybe we get him. Maybe we get those, uh, those like, cowboy droids at the bounty hunt. I, You know, I, I think, I don't know necessarily that this has to have anything genealogical. I think this is, this is the new era. I think this is, a, you know, Star Wars is always at its best when it's making a commentary on real life right like it's always kind of fun when it's like kind of related and i think maybe this is all about boba fett finding a family you know a man who's been yeah, alone his entire life finding people that he actually genuinely trusts like he seems to really actually trust fennec shand right now despite yes what an alliance based on loyalty right, right. that's that's a pretty powerful thing in yeah. this corner of so the So maybe universe. not Bosk then. Maybe Bosk would be a bad choice. <laughs> if I mean, look, if he can flip Black Chrysanthemum, he can flip Bosk. The problem is you can't have those people sitting at the same table. Well, yeah, I mean, it seems like, but they have, there is precedent. They have worked together in the comics. So, you know, okay. maybe, maybe when there's money involved, Chrysanthemum's like, I, I, I can look past the fact that I hate this, <laughs> this Trandoshan who's, whose people have hunted down my people for centuries. So. Maybe maybe right. he'll let it slide for the right amount of coin, you know? Yeah. Um, I'm just curious to see, like, he's fighting an army. Yeah. So, you know, in the past, uh, Star Wars is like, oh, we have an army of clones that is uh, secretly being bred on uh, Kamino. Mm-hmm. They can help fight your war for you. Mm-hmm. Even if it's just, like, individuals on a team, this isn't like you have a team that you put together. Right. You need, like, sections, divisions of people mm-hmm. to, to fight this war. 
So I'm kind of curious to see, you know, are is there just like an army of mercenaries out there that Finnick knows about that we don't know about that's about to be? Yeah, finished? you know, it's kind of, or it's like the uh, Game of Thrones um, when uh, when uh, when the uh, the veil joins. Uh, yeah, starts. or like the Unsullied or yeah. something like that. Yeah, it's like, is it, yeah, who, who, who can be brought up? They are going to eventually need to beef up their numbers. It can't just be like six badass fighters because then it turns into like, you know, they're just going to get, it's like the 300. They're just. Yeah, they're, that's why I think it's going to be like uh, whoever the members of the Watch, the other Mandalorian groups that are still out yeah, there, he's no. going to make an agreement with them saying, help me fight this war. I'll use my forces from defeating the Pikes yeah. to help you retake Mandalore. Maybe and that if, propels maybe us. Maybe if Cara Dune apologizes or is on her best yes. behavior, she can uh, fly in. <laughs> <laughs> Say something offensive. Stop, stop comparing things like, to the Clatoonian genocide. You know, <laughs> instead of you know her her uh, her own opinions. But we don't have to dive into that. Uh, <laughs> oh, it's too late. We already have the whatever. Tub girl. The, I meant tub girl. The, Maybe tub girl will come. In. Yes. <laughs> Oh my god. But before we continue with the rest of this episode, today's episode is sponsored by Honey. We all shop online and we've all seen that promo code field just taunt us at checkout, but thanks to Honey, manually searching for coupon codes is a thing of the past. Honey is the free browser extension that scours the internet for promo codes and applies the best one it finds to your cart. When you're checking out on a shopping site, the Honey button drops down and all you have to do is click apply coupons, wait a few seconds as Honey searches for coupons, and if it finds a working coupon, you'll watch the prices drop. We all use Honey around the office. Off-screen producer Brandon recently saved five bucks on a food delivery, and editor John saved 10% on a new jacket. Honey has found its over 17 million members over $2 billion in savings. And if you don't already have Honey, you could be straight up missing out on some free savings. It's literally free and installs in a few seconds, and by getting it, you'll be doing yourself a solid and supporting this show. So get Honey for free at joinhoney.com slash Wookiee. With one E. That's joinhoney.com slash Wookie. Also, thanks to Blue Chew for sponsoring this episode. We're pretty confident in our theories here on Wookie Leaks, and confidence can take you pretty far in life and in the bedroom. That's where Blue Chew comes in. Blue Chew is a unique online service that delivers the same active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis, but in chewable tablets and at a fraction of the cost. You can plan ahead or be ready for whenever an opportunity arises. The process is simple. You sign up at bluechew.com, consult with one of their licensed medical providers, and once you're approved, you'll receive your prescription within days. It's all done online, so no visits to the doctor's office, no awkward conversations, no waiting in line at the pharmacy. Blue Chew's tablets are made in the USA and prepared and shipped direct to your door in a discreet package. So if you could benefit from some extra confidence when it's time to perform, Blue Chew can help. And we've got a special deal for our audience. Try Blue Chew for free when you use our promo code NEWROCKSTARS at checkout. Just pay the $5 in shipping. That's bluechew.com promo code NEWROCKSTARS to receive your first month free. Visit bluechew.com for more details and important safety information and we thank blue chew for sponsoring the show and we want to thank Babel for sponsoring this episode lots of us have goals for this year at the top of lots of our list is learning a new language with Babel, the language learning app that sold more than 10 million subscriptions the whole Babel process is addictively fun fast and easy Babel teaches bite-sized language lessons for real world use two of our editors at new rockstars are currently using Babel to learn spanish they're racing each other to see who can get fluent first and they both love the app Babel's 15 minute lessons make it the perfect way to learn a new language on the go. Babbel lessons were created by over 100 language experts and have been scientifically proven to be effective. With Babbel, you can choose from 14 different languages, including Spanish, French, Italian, and German. Plus, Babbel's speech recognition technology helps you improve your pronunciation and your accent. There are so many ways to learn with Babbel. In addition to lessons, you can access podcasts, games, videos, stories, even live classes. Plus, it comes with a 20 day money back guarantee. Start your new language learning journey journey today with Babbel. Right now, when you purchase a three-month Babbel subscription, you'll get an additional three months for free. That's six months for the price of three. Just go to Babbel.com and use the promo code Wookiee. That's B-A-B-B-E-L.com code Wookiee. Babbel, language for life. So, Tommy, I wanted to ask you, yes. what the fet are the Pikes plotting at this point in Star Wars history? How do they get so powerful? What is their end goal? Well, this is uh, a lot like uh, Dune in the sense that he who controls the spice controls the gal- right. controls the world or whatever, controls the universe. Yeah. I think that they are amassing resources. They're taking 
They're taking planets and they're draining the planets of their resources, stripping them of any of their value and moving on. Like they are, they are the colonizers. They are the like, you know, they're, they're going into the diamond mines, taking all the diamonds and just leaving wreckage, you know? Again, yeah. I think kind of a commentary on things that have historically really happened in, 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 in the world. So I, I think what they're plotting is to amass a tremendous amount of wealth and fill the power vacuum. You know, the, 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 the empire is presumably down now. We know that there's a dark, uh, uh, a first order rising, but we don't know where that is right now. So I think that maybe they're establishing themselves as the new galactic overlords, you know, through wealth rather than through destruction and through, through, through war. I think they're, they're, they're doing the old money talks. Uh, yeah, this know, is what you typically see in history. Once yeah. the political order gets revolutionized, overturned right. in some way, the next most organized group, arguably who was more organized than the political structure, are the yeah. criminal elements. Right. Who, uh, honestly, the political order in this case kind of used to keep order in certain things. It's like that line from Tarkin: "Oh, the regional governors will keep them." In, you know, That's like right. <laughs> like they yeah. kind of rely on yeah. a decentralized thing, and then the fear of the Death Star being the ultimate centralization right. to keep right. people in line. Right. Um, but now the the Pikes, through their uh, clever scheming and their organization, and just two 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 sided two faced diplomacy, right? Like that's the classic. Right. Like we'll work with you. We'll work with you. Now you two kill each other, and we'll take what both of you have. Yeah. I want to know still how the huts fit into all this. If they truly yeah. do fear the pikes, if they're secretly working with the pikes, uh, yeah. or if they're hoping that uh, Boba Fett will have some loyalty to them as a result of this Rancor gift. Yeah. Um, I, I want to shout out our uh, friends of new rock stars, uh, Joanna Robinson and Mallory Rubin over at the Ringerverse, mm -hmm. who uh, are so great in their analysis. I would I would mm -hmm. check out their after shows. They're they're so thoughtful in the way yes. they go through these episodes. Uh, but one theory that they brought up was this idea that because Tatooine used to be covered in vast oceans, mm -hmm. the Pikes, if you do consider them an aquatic species, mm. uh, who have to wear these special breathing masks usually when they're in the spice mines, mm -hmm. um, and when they're on this planet, they need water to survive. That mm. maybe this could be their native land. This could be oh, something. Yeah. There's a diaspora. There's some sort of ancestral claim. To Obadiah, uh, but originally they were on Tatooine. They're trying to reclaim. This is why it's oh. so important. Though. I That's really that's fascinating. All right. Well. I, we, I, I feel like they brought it up multiple times that the planet of Tatooine used to be covered. Well, in yes, oceans. that has been. That seems to be the entire like geographic history of Tatooine seems to have been brought up. You know, over and over. They keep mentioning the Dune Sea and things like that. So yeah, I think uh, that that does make sense. Yeah, I mean, if it's not that, I, I hope that they have some kind of explanation for why they keep bringing this up, mm -hmm. other than the fact that it's just like geographically and anthropologically interesting yeah i wonder i wonder if they'll like hit like a water spring or something at some point like a blaster will hit like the sand and water will bubble up and it'll be the beginning yeah. of something like that yeah. i don't know what i do guess I know? we will see um one last question i'm going to ask you tommy yes. this whole moment where boba fett gets revenge on the yeah. kenton striders did boba fett massacre these kenton striders uh without really any proof other than the sigil without someone else taking credit using their logo did he commit like a kind of uh uh war crime yeah i don't know if you'd call this a war crime it, but it's, it's tough to it, it would be tough to argue against that i mean the thing about it is you know boba fett was kind of a merciless bounty hunter before this transformation yes. he had with the tuscan raiders and, you know, there's a chance that this, you know, he was looking for something or someone or some people to take out his aggression on and his anger and his grief. So maybe even though he didn't, you know, know with with absolute certainty that it was uh, that it was the Nikto biker gang, it was enough for him to, you know, do some healing by blasting. Uh, and yeah, I just, I, d I just don't know how we as viewers were meant to feel yeah, while it, watching. It definitely because bumped me. If if we were meant to be like, hell yeah, why would they include that line from yeah. Fennec earlier in the episode where she's like, "Speed bikers defeated Tuscans"? Mm. That's highly unlikely. I wonder like, if, if I though we, it feels as though we're done with back to flashbacks. I wonder if there will be some more um, evidence of the Nicta uh, biker gang. Nick, I'm sorry, the Nick Doe uh, biker gang uh, messing with Boba Fett more. Or, like, I mean, he did witness them, or what, what appeared to be them, like, you know, 
raiding that moisture farmer's house too. So he right. has seen them do messed up he has stuff. He's seen them do bad things. He yeah. saw them screwing with uh with Cammy. Yeah. Um, you know, like sure. I just think not I that that justifies this... blasting them on a Yeah, yeah. I mean, look, these guys are, are jerks, you know. They, mm. they they there's a good chance they were the ones who murdered the uh mm. the Tuscans there. Mm. I just think it's an example of how Star Wars likes to just like point in lots of different directions yes. and say, look, the world's just a, compl- a right. complicated place. It's, it's the code breaker. It's, maybe, they're, maybe they're setting us up for some Benicio Del Toro uh, we- <laughs> weapons. I sell to these people, I sell to these people, and uh, yeah. they're, they're both on both sides. So, um, But I did find that interesting that they would include that line. I also found it interesting that uh, Boba Fett would call them sand people, and oh, yeah. then... Phoenix Shand is the one who calls him Tuscans. Yeah. Like I you would think that would be reversed that Boba, after spending all this time with him, would learn maybe just Star Wars is not saying that is the slur that we have been saying it is. Yes. It's I just a common maybe, term. Yeah, they're, they're 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 done with naming the ship Slave One, but they're doubling down on sand people. <laughs> complex world. That's it's right. a complex universe out there. It takes Tommy. all folks, guys. It takes all folks to make this <laughs> I'm crazy. I'm glad I have you with me oh, to Eric. navigate it. Me too. That maybe. is it for this episode of Wookie Leaks. Again, the Easter egg breakdown is coming tomorrow and Tommy and I will be back next Wednesday with our reaction to chapter five of the Book of Boba Fett. Don't forget to check out our many great merch options at newrockstarsmerch.com. Follow me at EA Voss. Follow Tommy at Tommy Bechtold. Follow New Rockstars. Subscribe to Wookie Leaks wherever you get your podcasts. Thank you for watching. We We have spoken. spoken!